Many people regard you as a personification of Ubuntu. What do you understand Ubuntu to be? In the old days when we were young, <clears throat> a traveler through a country would stop at a village <clears throat> and uh, he didn't have to ask for food or for water. Once he stops, the people give him food, entertain him. That is one aspect of Ubuntu, but it will have various aspects. Ubuntu does not mean that people should not enrich themselves. The question, therefore, is, are you going to do so in order to enable the community around you uh, to be able to improve? These are the important things in life. And if one can do that, we have done something very important which will be appreciated. Broadcasting from WBRN Radio via the Boston Red Network. This is the Open Source Report on the 23rd of July 2018. With our sponsors at uh, Cranston Software, where we uh, develop uh, open source uh, software and open source hardware. We particularly engage uh, with the community uh, in terms of low... Uh, types of configuration uh, for notebooks and uh, for desktops uh, that use uh, less resources, I should say low resources. Uh, any of the Linux kernels are very good for this, particularly if you have an older notebook slash laptop or a desktop. They can be a very valuable resource. Not only that, a learning tool uh, for the community because if you use uh, many of the uh, distributions uh, you can learn uh, quite a bit about programming we use a uh, slackware around here slackware 14 and 14.2 uh, uh, i believe it is now and our server is up to date uh we use the uh, latest uh, libraries downloaded uh from the slackware uh, website the kernel there i believe is uh now let's get to the kernel. We always do that as we open up each uh, show right after uh, Nelson uh, Mandela. The latest stable kernel is uh, 41.17.9. We are using, I believe, the long-term kernel is 4.14.57 of 5.6. Slackware is a little bit different, but... Uh, we will be eventually moving up to the uh, stable uh, kernel, uh, the most recent stable kernel. Of course, there is also uh, the RC, that is um, 4.180. Any of these you can use the tarball, you can use a patch to update uh, the kernel. Uh, what we've been doing uh, here at Cranston is uh, constantly updating uh, our kernel. We'll hear from on the state of software, this was in uh, 2017 uh, from Mr. Greg Hartman. He is the uh, one maintainer of the kernel. And we'll also look at Scientific uh, Linux and several other uh, items here. Let's just look at the lineup real quickly here. Uh, how to uh, install a URL shortener with Apache. Uh, we started with the Apache, it was just the Apache project at that time, the Apache server. We'll hit a little bit about this, and we will uh, put this particular um, article uh, on the show. And 
goes on how to uh, configure multiple uh, websites with an Apache web server for those who are using one. Uh, this is by, uh, let's see, make sure I get him uh, right here, David Boat. And it was written on the 29th of May 2018. So it is a fairly recent uh, situation. Let's just start out here with the uh, state of the uh, kernel. That was in 2017. Um, and the number of developers. The highlight was uh, the 4.7. Uh, the uh, Linux kernel development model. What works on Linux and which companies contributed to uh, Linux. This is a report. We'll include, but uh, developers, there are 1,681 uh, developers and 225 companies involved, and 24,766,703 uh, lines of code. That is in the 4.13 uh, 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 kernel, version of the kernel. Some very good uh, statistics uh, to uh, send out uh, to the uh, people and uh, something to look at. This is from the Linux uh, Foundation. And, of course, one can uh, go to the Linux Foundation and download uh, this uh, particular uh, report. Let's go back here. Uh, we won't do the shortening. We were looking at it. Uh, but we'll... Many times... Uh, we look at things here and then we decide uh, we'll go do uh, something else and we will and go do something this is opensource.com we're just taking a general uh, look here uh, how to uh, check uh, free space in Linux there are several applications that to do incidentally can uh, do this um, DF is uh, the command you can do that at the prompt uh, DFH shows a disk space in a, a readable a format. So there's some of the things uh, that you can uh, do here. Uh, there are applications that also do uh, do do this, I should say. A DU uh, shows the disk usage of files and folders. Something important to, to do. Um, and uh, so forth and so on. Some of the little tips here we occasionally get they have been around for a very a long time uh, period I think we will spend a little time on how to develop an authentic uh, developers a community how to build your community and while also meeting the needs of the organization now this is more a model um, I'll just read a little bit of it here uh, and to it. Leslie Hawthorne uh, in uh, July the 18th of 2000 or 18 July 2018 and starting off uh, as more uh, software businesses are selling open source products we have uh, seen a corresponding rise in uh, emphasis of building our uh, developer communities around these uh, products as a key metric for success Happy users of passionate advocates, and uh, these passionate advocates uh, rise, uh, excuse me, raise overall awareness of the company's product and offerings and attract uh, the right uh, vocal influences into your community and a customer base, informing relationships with the company. Now, this is a little bit different. A Red Hat would be an example of this. Uh, they've been building a communities uh, to. Uh, of their uh, entrepreneurial uh, enterprise, let's say. Now, there are other communities out here, such as what we do at Crest and Saltware. We're not uh, forming the interest of Crest and Saltware. We're forming the interest of the open source and open hardware community uh, adhering to the rules of the Free Saltware Foundation, Libre Saltware. In other words, we're propagandizing, propagandizing around all of these uh, elements. Now, our basic uh, core uh, uh, product is we develop models uh, for elections and models uh, 
for macroeconomics. It used to be called an econometric model. Now it's an analytical model. Anyway, those are things that we uh, do. And we use those uh, to predict uh, elections. And through our various uh, programs uh, on the Boston Red Network, we use it on Boston Red. That's our political program. And uh, with Kent Cranston Analytics, uh, we uh, use our model there on... Um, Numbers Man, that is our uh, macroeconomics program. But those are all uh, public uh, services, and we tried to differentiate uh, between the two. We have in the past done political consulting, economic uh, consulting, but we are building, uh, I guess you'd say, a basically an informal community, not uh, with an enterprise as such, period. But what we're doing here is, obviously we're using open source Dot com to push this. Understanding the value of community. Now, MySQL is not a very good uh, example. Uh, one of the more successful open source businesses of all time, of course, owned by Oracle. That success in the open source uh, business relies upon serving audiences uh, well. Well, no doubt, free and open source uh, businesses won't work unless you serve those who uh, spend time to save money and those who spend money to save time. Well, very good uh, there. But expectations, uh, there's nothing wrong with making uh, explicit ask of your community for help if uh, you are hoping uh, for advocacy. And that's what we do, encourage your community members uh, to speak at uh, meetups. We do that. We go to various uh, meetups. We went to uh, Google regional meetups and presented uh, open source there in terms of Android and where Android is and diversity within the community. Those are some of the things that we do for the community and as part of the community. Now this is one of the interesting things to understand. There are a lot of communities out there. Uh, Dan Rabbit, the the, uh, veteran journalist spends his own money to develop a community incidentally you can find his uh, latest project at uh, Spotify just put in the uh, a search at Dan Rava there and he's talking about also community and we work with Dan Rava his uh, news and guts uh, site as part of the community now the community of open source also goes into open knowledge and that is one of the things that we've been pushing for a very, very long time. And now we have various universities that have their courses on the uh, net. Uh, MIT is one to think of. Harvard has some. In fact, Harvard has a new degree program. Uh, a young person was telling me about that you can enroll in. I believe it leads to a master's. I'll get more on that uh, later uh, from him, I get back to him, but nonetheless, this whole open knowledge thing started uh, as uh, we had open source software. So, in other words, we had to have the tools, and now we can move uh, forward with the tools. And uh, I know in the internet uh, radio uh, community, again, another community there, incidentally, there's a podcasters movement convention in Philadelphia coming up. Uh, this week if you're in uh, Philadelphia. A lot of people there use open source tools like Audacity. We'll get to some of those in a minute uh, that, are used, that you can use uh, to build a server to these, uh, do these sorts of things. And this is all part of building the community. And getting the license here, have a sane uh, contributor's license, we won't get into that because we're Libre, and that is uh, by the open source, uh, excuse me, by the Free Software Foundation. There's some of these others that are very, very quirky, and we've talked about them before. We won't talk about them here. But we're using the best of this. Be consistent, no doubt about that. Likewise, if your product is focused on supporting your open source software product, don't provide free support uh, to uh, do a good deed for the user community. Well, That's a very interesting uh, point there. Uh, There's not necessarily free support, but there's a lot of information in the community that, uh, and this is where it gets a bit tricky, where community members 
we can think of what uh, OpenStack and some others answer questions for people in the community. Not necessarily about the product, but again, OpenStack is sort of like a GitHub. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with uh, helping your uh, support staff say uh, no to uh, requests that eat into building your company as well. That is a different situation there. And Ms. Hartford got uh, a little bit off here, and this is why we presented uh, it as uh, such. Let me move on here. This is building authentic community. Five questions to answer before building a community. I think um, who will be in the community is very important. Uh, when you look at the number one here, uh, Michael Hall is uh, this particular on the 19th of July, 2018. Well, in the community, there are a lot of people. Uh, the whole uh, meetup uh, idea has grown. There are people, uh, we, we do an R meetup group uh, Google meetup groups, all kinds of meetup groups. Uh, in Boston, we have uh, the Bitcom uh, uh, meetup group. In Chicago, we have different groups. And we uh, promote all of these groups, uh, no matter what town it is. It can be in Chicago, it can be in Boston, it can be in Nashville, it could be in the Minneapolis uh, period. Do you want the community to lead or support or promote? Well, we chose a healthy community can do a lots of uh, companies and projects uh, but establishing the earlier what you want to do so they're not a misunderstanding we got in the business in uh, 1988 we were uh, at that time um, dealing in a product called a shareware the shareware movement which it was a precursor to the open source uh, movement at that time of course we had the free software foundation out there but our whole idea was a uh, providing of uh, this uh, software which was a uh, free a person if they liked it they could buy it if not they could still use it and this is a different uh, concept and this is before Linux kernel uh, came out but we could also use it we were at that time we were actually selling hardware various types of hardware servers desktops etc hard drives you name it monitors we sold it so it was sort of like uh, the evolution of IBM IBM started out, they, they were uh, with their uh, Unix, uh, Alex, um, that they were giving away, the and all of the hardware people were, they were giving away the source code for the software because they were selling hardware. And it was kind of interesting. We started out as a software company that quickly uh, morphed into a hardware company, and that was what we were selling. And we were selling services uh, from Brick and Fix, you name it. But anyway, that just shows you how one can do it. But at the same time, one can uh, serve the community and not uh, be uh, a commercial company, uh, not a red hat, uh, period. It's sort of like what Slackware does. Uh, the developers of Slackware and the Slackware community, although uh, they at one time they had a DVD with uh, Slackware on it. They sold it. You can donate uh, to uh, uh, Slackware, uh, the gentleman that uh, the principal uh, developer there uh, does uh, work uh, programming work for various people but Slackware is one of his uh, things that is given to the community and we appreciate that uh, out of Slackware and we promote it every time we get an opportunity what uh, what value do you want uh, from your community uh, it goes hand in hand with the previous question but it digs deeper and deserves its own answer. Too often people approach building community like a field of dreams. Well, you can't have a field of dreams, but what does happen over a period of time, if you are into a field of dreams, that you become a realistic situation as, as things mature. And out of our shareware uh, program, uh, developed uh, open source. Basically, it was the same thing. The only the only difference, open source was free. It, there was no uh, requirement that you buy it, and, uh, and thus it the the whole uh, movement uh, matured. And then, of course, we had some libertarians and got into it, and uh, we had big debates with the people from uh, Red Hat at one time. I remember, in the uh, what was it, late uh, nineteen. 
90s and early uh, 2000 uh, with a gentleman that was at the time at Caldera. He's no longer there and no longer is there at Caldera. They made the mistake of taking on IBM and got their ass kicked. But those are some of the things out there. Red Hat is still surviving. They have the Enterprise Edition and uh, they do offer some uh, public uh, services out there. And the same thing with SUSE. They are still out there. Uh, they have uh, Fedora, I believe, is their uh, open source contribution. But uh, there's another organization, Ubuntu, that came out of Kananica, that came out of nowhere, basically speaking. And uh, they are the desktop people, but they also, their server is, is a solid. But any of the Linux edi- uh, distributions can turn into that. What uh, company goals do you want the community to contribute uh, to? How much uh, this community is worth to the company? Well, that depends. It obviously out of uh, a situation when you get involved in there. For the Red Hat people, um, at one time uh, before they went to uh, Fedora, uh, the free, they separated off. They used to have the Red Hat, and of course they now have Red Hat Enterprise. And we'll get to the scientific um, uh, Linux that is patterned after the enterprise Linux uh, as we move along. Let me just move along here a little bit. Uh, we won't mess around with building a shorter uh, virtual servers. Um, how to configure multiple uh, websites with an Apache server. That's creating a virtual server. Many of us uh, use of uh, these services that uh, have that and I uh, wrote the article virtual machine this is using Fedora uh, 27 is it two, 27 with Apache 2 uh, 2.4.29 uh, if uh, you have another distribution or release of Fedora the uh, commands you use and the location and content configuration files could be different but nonetheless Apache is there and you can look at the Apache uh, server. I think we'll go ahead and put this up. Name uh, based uh, virtual uh, service. This is how you can run a virtual server from a one uh, IP address. Set up uh, your second website. You need uh, to get the name based uh, virtual host working uh, in existing file. We won't go into that, but the virtual host is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 2 1. Uh, Oh, excuse me, let me start over again. 127 dot not out of zero zero one. That would be it. And um, root, that would uh, be there. And the name server. Yeah. <coughs> excuse me. Is at this time settel.org, whatever you want to call your name server. This is some basic stuff. I'll go and include this. <coughs> excuse me, including uh, on the setup. You can look at it for those that want to create a new uh, website directory. Some of the things that root tests, etc., and how to create a directory. It tells you that. And hello world. Uh, again, uh, that's the second website. Let's just see if your websites are up there. These simple examples show how to uh, serve up two websites with a single instance of the Apache uh, server and you can of course do that um, and some people have done it and actually went into commercial enterprise this is by uh, Dave Both. Uh, interesting article there now this is a Linux distribution for digital artists we've had this show up here for quite a while uh, GIMP we use that to turn it to uh, Photoshop uh, Link. Uh, Link uh, is a <coughs> excuse me. Is an attorney to Illustrator. This is uh, and uh, what Natron is an attorney to After Effects, and Scribulus is an attorney to InDesign. We'll we'll put this one up. An alternative to Animate CC is uh, called uh, Sysfin Studio. Not used Fistin Studio at all. Um, and uh, let's see, we've not uh, used uh, uh, 
Link, uh, Link, uh, Linkscape, Iva. Now these are uh, Ardura. Uh, we will put this in up. Ardura is a professional digital uh, workstation. Unlike many other uh, closed source, uh, it's a cross platform. It supports various uh, things here. Uh, Ardura. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. It will handle both uh, MIDI's and audio files. Supports a Jack Audio, and that is one of the things here. And basic other things: uh, uh, Audacity. Uh, we don't want to forget Audacity. That we use Audacity. We're using it right now. Blender is one of the well-known open-source uh, software for 3D imaging and uh, rendering. Uh, rendering. See, we've used Blender before. And Foxfire. Uh, that is and go duck duck we use that all the time LibreOffice we also use LibreOffice music score is a music notation a software it supports um, music uh, XAML and uh, MIDI etc and uh, lots of uh, sound fonts anyway Open Broadcast uh, software is a great uh, for streaming and uh, screencasting. You know, a lady that was using that. Processing is a Java-based uh, programming language, primarily for visual artists. And we'll put this up. Pure uh, Data is one of the oldest and most widely used uh, virtual uh, programming language uh, for uh, multimedia works. And something here called uh, Super Collider. I'm not sure what it is. Over the past decade, live coding a super collider, and uh, some of the things here uh, that you can do. Uh, Buhai uh, Linux uh, Media. Now I'm not sure about this. Is uh, we'll just put this up, and we'll quickly go look at some of these distributions here. There are a lot of different distributions, no doubt about that. We found. Uh, Scientific Linux. We thought we'd talk about it just a little bit here. Well, let's just skip over to it. Now, Scientific Linux is an enterprise uh, Linux uh, sponsored by uh, the National uh, Accelerator Lab. Excuse me, at uh, for me, uh, for me. Excuse me, National uh, Accelerator Laboratory. For information, Scientific Linux uh, about page. And the release of scientific uh, Linux. So one of the things that's been around for quite a while. Uh, they're on, I believe. Let's see here. Let me get over to them. For me, Lab uh, is America's. Uh, Physics and Accelerator Lab. Uh, it is a very important part of America, uh, America's scientific uh, the Fermi Lab. Fermi Lab uh, here, particle uh, physics uh, lab, and this is a very good addition here. Uh, and we invite you to go over there. We'll put at least a note about it. The latest release of it. Uh, Linux 7 installed, and of course, live media there, and it's x86 and a 64 bit uh, page. And there is also a community page here, supports page, and FAQ uh, page, a community. And this is a good idea about that as a community project. Our official community involvement started with uh, the uh, mailing list. And these are some lists here uh, scientific Linux users list, etc. And you'll be able to. Uh, Exercise to access this. We already talked about uh, the kernel and the state of the kernel, and I thought we talked about. Let me just make sure where I am here. There's 12. I guess we didn't. The sys uh, admin uh, guide uh, to SE uh, Linux. 42 big questions answered. We won't go through all of these, but uh, security, hard, and compliance policies. The four horsemen of the uh, sys administrator. No doubt about that. And uh, uh, we'll go through some of these. SE Linux is a labeling uh, system. I remember when you used to get that 
literally from uh, the uh, National Intelligence Agency, was it? Yeah, or was it CIA? National Intelligence Agency. You went there, and and that's where you downloaded. And at that time, it was not part of the kernelists in the old days there. Anyway, too, some of the most important concepts are labeling files, processes, ports, and uh, type enforcement. Let me just go with some of these. And the correct uh, label format, how to use it, use it dot, uh, row dot type. The purpose of multi-layer security enforcement uh, to control uh, processes. Multi-category uh, of security enforces uh, processes uh, and similar processes for each. Uh, kernel uh, parameters uh, for changing SE Linux modes at boot. And you have auto, and you have enforced uh, some of the things you can do. If you need to relabel the entire system, uh, this is in the root uh, directory, touch, and then uh, a forward slash auto uh, label, uh, and you can reboot it at that time. And to check uh, that uh, SCC Linux is enabled, uh, get uh, enforced simple and to temporarily enable disable uh, set uh, enforce and a uh, 10 status of your tools uh, you do uh, SE uh, status here and configuration files uh, I'll put this up and commands accept arguments uh, so forth. So I won't go into that. 14, there are four uh, key causes of uh, error in SE uh, Linux, which are further explained in uh, labeling problems. So sometimes SE Linux needs to know. Uh, labeling uh, processes, uh, another one here, if you know the process, and how to get to it. Labeling uh, problems, if you uh, move a file instead of copying it, the uh, file keeps its original contents and to fix these issues, how to do it. Uh, if SE Linux uh, needs to know, uh, HTTP uh, D uh, listens on uh, port 8585, uh, port 8585, I should say. And uh, 19 SE Linux needs to know the Boolean allows uh, parts of SE Linux policy to be changed at runtime without any knowledge of uh, SE uh, policy writing. And in 19, uh, SE uh, Linux uh, needs to know, uh, wait a minute, the Boolean uh, are uh, just uh, off and on those settings, oh, I see. SE Linux uh, policy, we'll go into all these, uh, but just to get a general idea of what is uh, going on here. Hey, with it, um, log in, log out, we'll just put this up um, as we go down to connect it to the label, well, anyway. So for Python, if you need uh, to get a, uh, a container full access to the system, uh, etc., how to do that. Now you know the answer, so don't panic uh, and turn on SE Linux. And this is by uh, Mr. Alex uh, He is at Red Hat in uh, Kalinja. He's based in Mexico City. So I have one here, and uh, let's see. We'll we'll go to uh, as we usually do, Mr. Cribs on uh, security, uh, and see what he is up to. Uh, uh, this time around uh, and as um, I have a little bit more of a problem here <laughs> than um, yeah we let it just out um, yeah, we finally got him uh, what he is offering here uh, oh this is one that, that came even to our attention here Sextortion that scams use uh, recipients hacked uh, passwords. Here uh, is a uh, clever way uh, 
take an old email that um, served uh, uh, from uh, the uh, far more uh, believable the message is prepared uh, to do it the massive uh, threats uh, to release <laughs> a video uh, things there anyway uh, the uh, latest element of the sextortion uh, scam uh, has been around uh, for the uh, for some time, uh, it's been out there. I'm, I'm aware of that uh, the uh, password uh, formerly used by whomever else. You you know me, and uh, you are uh, thinking why uh, you received this email. Uh, this is yeah. I remember getting one of these uh, from seven years ago. You have 24 hours yeah to do it anyway. That's what the scam is all about. And uh, it is indeed a scam. The massive threat is uh, is released. Uh, the video, but there's no video to release. But anyway, that's part of it here. Um, and the password formerly uh, needed the recipient is your password there. And let's uh, see the. Uh, Formula, you don't have, uh, you don't know me. Well, I suppose, yeah. Lucky guessing is probably what you'd call more than anything else. Hacked a password, and uh, again, this is one of the big ones out here. Uh, you probably would get this, but with very, very old. Uh, Yeah, I heard from uh, different uh, readers who received uh, similar ones uh, in the past uh, 72 hours. Well, it was two or three weeks ago, I think we got one. And all of these uh, recipients and uh, the password uh, was uh, close to 10 years old. Yeah, it was the same old difference here. Uh, my guess is uh, that the perpetrators have uh, created uh, some kind of script that... Uh, Draws directly uh, from username and password. Uh, breach of a popular uh, website, uh, but happened uh, more than a decade ago. Oh, I see what they've done. Yeah, so in other words, this is what the scheme is all about. Uh, let's miss a little time on this one. That... In other words, they're using... I, I wondered how they actually they did this because it was obvious that uh, these were sites, many probably not even in business anymore, that uh, they have been putting out here. And, yeah, it's likely... Okay. Yeah, this is his guess there. Uh, compromise is part of breach. Ian, uh, the same email address, used it to sign up. Uh, to that hacker's uh, site. I suspect that the scam uh, gets uh, refined even uh, more uh, around there. Uh, it convinced people that the hacker's threat is real. And there are a number of uh, shady password lookup uh, services online that index billions of user names. And you could go to one of those. And alternatively, the industrial scammer can simply uh, execute the scam using a customer database from a freshly hacked site. But that usually doesn't work. Send uh, semi-automatic uh, scams like this one with no actual physical leverage to back it up. Yeah, this is a scheme. According to the FBI, uh, here are some of the things you can do to avoid being a victim. Never send uh, compromising images of yourself. Well, that's obvious there. And uh, when uh, they say uh, you uh, don't open the attachment, don't open the FBI, says many uh, sextortion uh, cases, the perpetrator is an adult uh, pretending to be a teenager. Oh, I see. So, in other words, there are more schemes here than uh, Carter has uh, liver peels, uh, quite literally. So, those uh, you watch out for there and became a very, very big... Uh, 
situation out here. Let me just take a look at one of these uh, little uh, sites here. Okay. Well, here's one here. Also, uh, Canadian police uh, charge operator of hacked password uh, services leaked to source.com. And they caught this guy in a Canada. This is in the 2017 the Canadian Mounted Police. I got read about this in before. This is one of the sites here that they've been closing down. Okay. Let me finish up here. Uh, this person actually, um, someone that pled uh, guilty here. No, this is a different character. There's so many of these characters out here. Anyway, Mr. Krebs has got, as usual, uh, human resource uh, firm, uh, compliant uh, rights uh, breach. Uh, compliant rights breach uh, is a proud based uh, human resource oh, company. So evidently they had a breach, uh, compliant right uh, there. So, um, according uh, to uh, compliant rights a website, some uh, seventy-six thousand organizations, uh, many of them are small businesses, uh, use the service uh, to prepare uh, tax forms. Oh, I see. And uh, various other W-2s, etc. And this is part of it. We'll just link uh, Mr. Uh, Cribs there so you can find out uh, what he is up to. Let me just go and I'll check uh, the uh, time here. Sorry about that to get to his thing. But uh, that, yeah, those things, are yeah, we're running out of time. Anyway, nonetheless, this has been the Open Source Report on the 23rd of July 2018 from WBRN Radio via the Boston Red Network. We'll be back in a week or so and this is, uh, I guess, the July program. We just got overwhelmed uh, here. I had a few medical issues, but nonetheless, we're still, as they say, piping along as we usually start uh, with uh, the uh, late uh, President of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, explaining the concept of Ubuntu. Now, we look at communities in terms of Ubuntu, which we do here at uh, Cranston Salt, where you start to understand what we're trying to do. And not only to extend it to a software, Libre software, now a more correct term we're starting to use, and hardware, the communities out there. Dave Jones, incidentally, at the uh, electronic... Uh, blog uh, there, Electronic Engineers blog. He's out of Sydney, Australia. Does a lot of good open source uh, work. We'll put a link uh, to his site. We invite you to go there. Uh, he's one of the premier uh, electrical engineers that is very successful on YouTube and doing teardowns and teaching people basic electronics, how to use meters, how me uh, multimeters, how to use scopes, etc., um, how not to be scammed by various schemes that come out there and uh, other things he has uh, hundreds of videos there on most any subject you want from how to tear down a monitor uh, I think his latest one was on a Casio piano he was looking at that one for under uh, $200 and basically how it was he's compared various uh, multimeters he also sells some uh, various multimeters, which scope is the best scope, how to set up a, a basic uh, home uh, bench, a laboratory for technical things. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, we didn't talk about, we used to talk about that every uh, broadcast, but nonetheless, he's done a lot of reviews on the Raspberry Pi um, and how to uh, set that up uh, and use it uh, for your projects, a very inexpensive way of.